A man gets jail and a $500,000 fine for sneaking into Canada's national parks during the coronavirus. A tanker truck overturns in Yellowstone. A veritable novel is graffitied onto a popular lighthouse. And wolverines have been spotted in one national park for the first time in over a century. It's time for the latest in national park news. Welcome to this month's News from the Parks report, running down the latest happenings in parks around the country, coming to you from the beautiful Gardner River and Yellowstone National Park. I'm Jason Epperson. This is the video version of our America's National Parks podcast, where we tell stories about America's greatest treasures. Once a month, we set aside an episode to recap the latest news stories taking place in national parks. If you'd like to check out the podcast, it's available on any podcast app. The America's National Parks podcast is sponsored by L.L. Bean. L.L. Bean believes the more time you spend outside together, the better. That's why they've partnered with the National Park Foundation to help you find your park and get there with family and friends. With more than 400 national park sites in the U.S., there are beautiful surprises to be found in every corner of the country. There's probably one closer than you think. Be an outsider with L.L. Bean. On March 1, 1872, President Grant signed the Yellowstone National Park Protection Act into law, and the world's first national park was born. It took another 44 years for the National Park Service to be created, on August 25, 1916. Here at Yellowstone and in parks across the country, rangers and visitors commemorated the 104th birthday of the National Park Service with a free admission day and special activities. Yellowstone had a special surprise to celebrate a rare eruption of the Giantess Geyser. Giantess is a fountain-type geyser in the upper geyser basin, which violently erupts in bursts that reach up to 200 feet. The surrounding area can shake from underground steam explosions just before the eruption. Giantess was one of the seven geysers named in the Washburn Expedition of 1870 and can erupt for up to 48 hours straight, but it only happens a few times a year. Earlier in August, the fan and mortar geyser erupted after laying dormant for nearly two years. Things weren't all rosy at Yellowstone for the National Park Service birthday, however, a southern portion of the Grand Loop Road, including the park's southern gates, were closed for five days due to heavy smoke from the 800-plus acre Lone Star Fire. The road reopened Thursday. The fire is still roughly the same size, but heavy rains overnight Wednesday into Thursday helped tamp it down. The Old Faithful Inn underwent a sprinkler test, just in case the wind shifts, sending the fire towards it. Greater Yellowstone ecosystem visitors and residents have been seeing the effects of smoke not only from the Lone Star Fire, but from fires as far away as California, which is experiencing one of the worst fire seasons on record. Much of the West is covered in a blanket of smoke, though it's cleared up here at Yellowstone over the past few days. Just as that southern portion of the Grand Loop Road reopened, another section closed. A tanker truck hauling gasoline overturned on the road between Mud Volcano and Fishing Bridge Junction. After a hazmat cleanup, the road has reopened. What was the tanker truck doing in Yellowstone? At over 2.2 million acres, Yellowstone is larger than the states of Rhode Island and Delaware combined, and it has seven gas stations of its own. Wolverines have been spotted in Mount Rainier National Park for the first time in over 100 years. Scientists released photos of a wolverine and her two kits found in the park. Wolverines are extremely rare. They're estimated to be only 300 to 1,000 individual wolverines in the lower 48 states. They're solitary animals, and despite their reputation for aggressiveness, they pose no risk to park visitors. If you're lucky enough to see one in the wild, it will likely flee as soon as it notices you. Well, the National Park Service has been trying to educate the public over the last few years about stacking rocks and creating rock dams in rivers. Despite its effect on the natural beauty of the area, creating cairns and rock dams is actually illegal. And Great Smoky Mountains National Park is trying to educate visitors that moving rocks and creeks and streams from their natural resting places can alter water flow and affect aquatic life in the waterways. Even small man-made dams can alter the stream ecology. In addition, the underbellies of rocks in the park are often homes to salamanders and their eggs. National parks across the country commemorated 100 years of women's constitutional right to vote this past week. Park service sites were illuminated in the historic suffrage colors of purple and gold on the 100th anniversary of the date the 19th Amendment was ratified. From the arch and the old courthouse at Gateway Arch National Park, 
to the Statue of Liberty's original torch, visible from its new glass-enclosed perch in the Statue of Liberty Museum, were illuminated, as well as national parks associated with the women's suffrage movement, including the historic Wesleyan Chapel at Women's Rights National Historic Park in New York, where suffragists met in 1848, and Belmont Paul Women's Equality National Monument in Washington, D.C. In total, over 50 National Park Service site structures were illuminated. The National Park Service has announced nearly $13 million in Save America's Treasures grants to fund 42 preservation and conservation projects in 26 states. The money comes from the Federal Historic Preservation Fund, which uses revenue from oil leases. The several dozen projects include conserving the Count Basie papers and artifacts and restoration of the Navy submarine USS Cod. The Park Service has also awarded almost $3 million in grants to protect 221 acres of Civil War battlefields and 13 acres of Revolutionary War battlefields in Kentucky, New Jersey, and Virginia. The grants will be used to acquire several portions of battlefields owned by private individuals. The Battlefield Land Acquisition Grant Program, administered by the American Battlefield Protection Program, provides up to 50% in matching funds for state and local governments to acquire and preserve threatened Revolutionary War, War of 1812, and Civil War battlefield land. Well, Big Bend National Park could grow by 6,100 acres under new legislation introduced by a Texas congressman. The boundary change would hinge on acquiring land from private individuals to protect the rare and unique Terlingo watershed, some of the most important fossil-bearing rocks in Big Bend, along with ruins of pioneer homesteads. More than half of the proposed acreage is within one property, the Fulcher Ranch, just west of the park and south of Terlinga, Texas. The property's owners have indicated an interest in selling the land and adding it to the park. Park rangers at Fire Island National Seashore are seeking the public's help to find those responsible for several recent acts of vandalism. Graffiti was found on the historic Fire Island Lighthouse as well as the side of the restroom structure near the park entrance. The vandalism to the lighthouse is believed to have taken place over the course of two nights, resulting in a lengthy essay transcribed on the lower panel. The Find Your Park photo sign was also broken. If you have information that could be helpful, contact the park. In pandemic news, Steamtown National Historic Site has suspended the remainder of its scheduled 2020 railroad passenger operations. This includes the Scranton Limited short train rides, fall foliage excursions through the Poconos, and the popular holiday trains to Moscow over Thanksgiving weekend. Pearl Harbor National Memorial Park in Hawaii will temporarily close due to state directives, and Grand Canyon National Park is resuming shuttle service on September 5th. The red and orange routes will operate from 5 a.m. until one hour after sunset each day. Two other routes are yet to open. Buses and shuttle operations will be limited to 15 passengers and face coverings are required. An American tourist who violated Canada's coronavirus travel restrictions at least twice to sneak a visit to Banff National Park in June is now facing a $500,000 fine and up to six months in jail. John Pennington, Walton, Kentucky, was traveling from Alaska to the continental United States when he stopped at the Rim Rock Resort Hotel inside Banff which is currently off limits to Americans. Canada closed its southern border on March 21st, with an exception for travelers making their way to and from Alaska. Americans are required to take the most direct routes and are prohibited from passing through national parks and stopping at tourist sites. Police initially issued Pennington a $900 ticket and ordered him to remain at his hotel until he left the following day, but on his way out, he was spotted at a popular tourist spot on Sulphur Mountain, not far from the hotel. He was arrested and is scheduled to appear in Canadian court in November. So far, he's the only American who's been arrested for violating Canadian coronavirus quarantine laws. Here at Yellowstone, I can report that crowds are medium to small. The traditional Yellowstone season has just ended, and most people here are recreating responsibly. A sign of the times, I spotted a disposable mask the other day, lying in one of the true wonders of the earth, Grand Prismatic Spring. If you're planning to visit Yellowstone within the next year, know that managers of Fishing Bridge, one of the largest campgrounds in the park and the only with RV hookups, have announced that the facility will be closed for yet another season. The scheduled reopening is fall of 2021 after construction finishes. That's it for this month's news from the parks. If you enjoyed the show, we'd love a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. 
If you're watching on YouTube, please click the thumbs up to let us know you like this kind of content and consider clicking the subscribe button and the notification bell so YouTube will let you know each time we release a new video. For more great American destinations, check out the Sea America podcast. And if you're interested in RV travel, find us at the RV Miles podcast. You can also follow Abigail and me as we travel the country with our three boys all over social media as our wandering family. Today's show was sponsored by L.L. Bean. Follow the hashtag Be An Outsider and visit LLBean.com to find great gear for exploring the national parks.